Hello, gentlemen. Welcome to section 2.3 on the modern view of atomic structure. Now, last lesson, we talked about subatomic particles and how they opened a world of this new meaning, meaning the atom is no longer seen as this indivisible piece of matter. It can be broken down to simpler substances. And the particles that we outlined were protons, neutrons, and electrons. Now, here's a chart just going through some of the the particulars of these subatomic particles. So let's go through them together. So we have protons, neutrons, and electrons. The symbol for a proton is P plus. Symbol for a neutron, N with a zero here. Electron, symbol E minus. The charges of a proton go along with their symbol. Charges of a proton is positive. Charge of a neutron is zero, no charge, hence the name neutron, like neutral. An electron has a negative charge. Now these particles are found in different places in the atom, or some the same. Protons and neutrons are both found in the nucleus, in the center compartment of the atom, and the electron is found outside of the atom in, elect in the electron cloud. Now these particles have masses, because they are made of matter, all matter contains mass. The mass of a proton is 1.673 times 10 to the negative 24th gram. That's its actual mass. Neutrons are very similar, 1.675 times 10 to the negative 24th grams. And electrons, 9.112 times 10 to the negative 28th grams. Now, these are very, very small masses. So, since atoms all have extremely small masses, if we take a little sidestep, the mass of the heaviest known atom is around 4 times 10 to the negative 22nd grams. That is extremely small for the heaviest atom known. And because it would be very difficult to express all of our numbers quantitatively in this type of scale, you know, such and such number to the negative 24th, 26th, 30th, going on as we do more mathematics with these type of numbers, because it would be very cumbersome and difficult to deal with these types of numbers all the time, man created a different scale. Scientists created a different scale. And we express these small numbers in terms of a scale called the atomic mass unit. Where one atomic mass unit equals 1.66054 times 10 to the negative 24th grams. One proton, for example, would equal 1.0073 atomic mass units. This is oftentimes just rounded to one. So up here for the mass for one proton, it's approximately one AMU. For a neutron, it's about 1.0087 AMU, rounded to one. So these essentially have almost the same mass. Neutrons are slightly heavier. And electrons have a mass of 5.486 times 10 to the negative fourth AMUs. We call this mass negligible. It is around 2,000 times smaller than a proton. It doesn't contribute much mass to the atom at all. So oftentimes it's seen as, seen as a negligible mass, but it is important to note that they do have mass, electrons. Now, when we look at the periodic table, that's where we can get the information about the mass that atoms and elements have. When we look at the periodic table, oftentimes we see, or not oftentimes, but we do see this notation here. We see little blocks up there with this key notation. Let's talk about what that stuff actually means. So we're going to talk about the atomic number, the mass number, and eventually isotopes. So every <clears throat> symbol on the periodic table, or every element represented on the periodic table, has this type of notation. We have an atomic symbol here, or elemental symbol, with the name underneath or sometimes above. The symbols can either be capital letters by themselves or capital letter accompanied with a lowercase letter, one or two lowercase letters depending on where you are on the periodic table. Here we have something called the atomic number. The atomic number is very important. It tells you the number of protons in a particular atom. Carbon has six. It's the six here. It also identifies an element. No element on the periodic table has the same atomic number. It is the atom's identity. So, the number of protons symbolizes the atom's identity. 
When the number of protons in an atom changes, the atom's identity itself changes. So this identifies the element. All carbon atoms have six protons. No other element will. In an electrically neutral atom, meaning an atom that has no charge, the number of protons equals the number of electrons. Protons are positively charged. Electrons are negatively charged. When they're in equal amounts, it creates a neutral, an electrically neutral system or atom. Carbon has six protons and six electrons. That information is given by the atomic number. Now, another number is this number here, 12.0107. This is the average atomic mass. Now, the average atomic mass is the average of all isotopes of this atom that exists in nature. We'll talk about what isotopes are in just a moment. First, a little breakdown about mass. The mass of a proton, as we said in the last board, is 1 AMU. Neutrons, 1 AMU. Electrons, we can say that mass is negligible in comparison to protons and neutrons. The rounded average atomic mass, which we said before is 12.0107, if we round this number, it's called the mass number. So 12 AMU. This number is important because the mass number represents the total number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus. And we know since the mass of electrons is negligible, the total mass of the atom must depend on the total number of protons and neutrons. So the mass number is the total mass of one atom of whatever element we're talking about. In this case, carbon. Now, the number of neutrons is found by subtracting the atomic number from the mass number. So in this case, for carbon, it will be 12 AMU, which is the entire mass of the nucleus, the entire mass of the atom itself, minus 6 protons equals 6 neutrons. That makes sense, because if my entire nucleus is made of you know, 12 AMUs, if six of them are neutrons, I mean, sorry, six of them are protons, that must, mean, that must mean the other six are neutrons. So, total subatomic particle count for carbon, six protons, six, six neutrons, and six electrons. Let's talk about what an isotope is. We just mentioned it up there. Now, let's talk about what an isotope is. Now, isotopes. In nature, a given sample of an element, if I were to scoop some element up, a given sample will contain atoms from different, sorry, contain, contain atoms that differ slightly. Now, decide what contradiction this first line is. What does that contradict that we've studied in the past? Now, an example of what this first line means. I have carbon atoms. They differ slightly. How do they differ slightly? in their notation. I have carbon with the mass number of 11, carbon with the mass number of 12, mass number 13, mass number 14. Now an isotope is a form of an element with the same number of protons, which means it has the same atomic number, the same identity, but a different number of neutrons, which gives it a different mass. So some atoms of that element are heavier than others, like twins. You know, one has just had a, a little more than the other. Now let's talk about isotope abundance. Now in nature, most elements occur as mixtures of isotopes, like we see here. If I picked up a sample of carbon, I'd have a mixture of isotopes. Carbon-11, carbon-12, carbon-13, carbon-14. Now some elements, however, are more abundant than others, meaning they, they occur in greater amounts. For example, for carbon, it's carbon-12. Carbon-12 is the most abundant. So if I picked up a sample of carbon, most of it would be carbon-12. That's what I mean by abundance. So, since carbon-12 is the most abundant form of carbon, this is why the average atomic mass that we saw on the last board is 12.0107. <clears throat> it's close to 12. The remaining 0.0107 AMUs is due to the contributing masses of carbon-11, carbon-12, and carbon-14. Sorry, carbon-11, 13, and 14. 
So they attribute their masses to the average, and what they attribute is, well, what they contribute is only this amount. We write isotopes in a specific way. So isotopes are usually identified by their mass. For example, carbon-14. That's how you'd write the isotope, carbon-14. Or carbon-13. It's just the name, dash, and the mass associated with that particular atom you're referring to. And how they differ again, by definition, isotopes are atoms that have the same number of protons with different number of neutrons, and we can see that here. Carbon-13 has six protons, six electrons, but seven neutrons. Carbon-14, six protons, six electrons, eight neutrons. Gentlemen, please take notes and look forward to the next video where we talk, how, talk about how to calculate the abundance and the average atomic mass for an isotope.